Have you ever seen a cow in the wild? A very peaceful animal, just standing there, eating some grass, occasionally even chilling on the hill. And then there's this, a freaking super mutant cow on steroids. Basically nothing about this abomination seems to be even close to natural, normal or lovable by its own mother. Now take that feeling that you just felt, that, that feeling of non-normality when, when you see this monstrous piece of meat, and, and that's exactly how I felt when my look went from this cute, peaceful Nokchi NH-L9i to this anabolic induced L9X65. Yeah, no jokes aside, but uh, this thing is a is a freaking monster. This is this is essentially what happens if you give Nokia the option to make everything even bigger. Just just look how they compare next to each other. That that thing is it's crazy. Anyway, with the way too long intro out of the way, let's get to this monstrous NH-L9X65. As the name might have already suggested it, this monstrous thing measures 65 millimeters in height out of the box. In the bottom we got the usual appropriately sized Noxia nickel plated copper base but the heat pipes are a bit off compared to the usual approach. Inside of this 51 millimeter high monster of a heatsink there are what looks like two heat pipes but those are actually four. Usually for a, a normal tower cooler the heat pipes would travel down the first fin through the base and then up the other side of the tower. Therefore you could just look at the top of the cooler, count the number of outsticking pipe ends, divide them by two, if the number is even you have them out of heat pipes, if it's odd you are having a stroke. On the NH-L9X65 however it works a bit differently. Here the heat pipes travel through one side or one half of the heatsink, do a U-turn into the base and then they just abruptly stop. On the other side we then have the exact same thing, therefore we do not have theoretically two heat pipes but we actually have four. As I'm not Mr. Noctua I'm not 100% sure why they did this, this could have many reasons, maybe size, maybe double U-turn in this like miniature design doesn't work, we will never know but I would just blindly believe that Noctua did not do this just to try it out but they had their reasons for it. On top of all of this inflation sits the exact same NFA9X14 PVM fan that we've seen on the smaller L9i counterpart. This little thing is powered by a 4 pin PVM cable and capable of spinning at up to 2500 rpm whilst pushing 33 CFM at 2.11 mm of H2O. At this point you might also notice that there are a bunch of extra indentations on the heat sink which may suggest that there are different ways of mounting the fan and you would be right. As Noxia also offers a 25 mm thick A9 PVM version you could potentially make this thing even bigger and more incredible totaling the overall height at 76 mm but that's for a different video. To finish off the cooler itself the box will contain the usual amount of stuff. Mounting hardware for LGA 17, 1200, LGA 1150s, 255, 2066, 2011-3 or 0 for Team Intel. Over on the red side we got the hardware for AM4 and AM5 as AMD decided to repurpose the mounting holes. For the rest of the box we got the usual thing, thermal paste, screwdriver and so on as well as the special little low noise adapter which allows you to limit the fan's max fan speed to 1800 rpm in case you are not able to use a PVM code for some reason. Installing the fan is a fairly easy process. For an Intel CPU we need to take the provided Intel backplate and shove the Intel screws through the holes and fix them on the other side using the plastic washers. And of course make sure to click in the screws in the outer holes for LGA1700 and the inner ones for everything else. From there position the backplate behind the motherboard, take the spacers blue for LGA1700 and black for everything else and position them on the outsticking screws. From here we need to position the mounting brackets in an inwards pointing position with the screw ends pointing upwards and then just make sure that both sides are sitting in symmetrically otherwise you will you know ugh. And from there just screw the whole thing down. Over on AMD side it's a bit less that needs to be done. 
Remove the pre-installed retention brackets, put some spacers on top, grey for AM4, white for everything else, and place the AMD mounting brackets in an it mode pointing position on top of that and then just screw it down. From here, on both platforms, remove the fan of the cooler, splash some thermal paste on your CPU, slap the enormous heatsink on top, screw it down through the holes in the heatsink and put the fan back on top. And voila, a steroid-induced piece of cooling on top of your poor little CPU. But how does it perform? We tested the L9X65 on our Ultra SFF benchmark setup. Here, the 65mm version of Noxious Monster was capable of keeping the CPU at 49 degrees C above ambient, a degree in front of the Scythe Shuriken 2. But what's more interesting to see is the huge leap forward that those 28mm of heatsink height difference was able to create. To be exact, the temperature dropped a staggering 12 degrees C by going from a small L9i to the bigger L9X65, a surprisingly huge step in our opinion. But what about the Noise 2 performance shot? Here we were able to see that although the Shuriken 2 and Noxia NH-L9X65 shared the number one spot for a very brief moment, the L9X65 was the absolute winner for the whole rest of the race, leaving absolutely everybody that was ever tested in the dust. A highly positive result. So where does all of this leave us? Well, from a performance standpoint, there is absolutely nothing to neck. The X65 managed to top our list and it even managed to keep up our nicely organized list of each cooler being a little bit lower when going down the list. It's, it's beautiful. On the noise to performance end, exactly the same thing, first place. Quality wise, I mean, it's a, it's a Noctua cooler and there is nothing to nag about quality-wise. You could, you know, talk about the design, that's a thing up to you. If you don't like the brown Noctua thing, just get another cooler. But like from a build quality standpoint, there is nothing to nag. You know, neither from an installation standpoint, it's the usual Noctua way. So in the end, to get or not to get. Well, if you are planning an Ultra SFF build and you are trying to use something like a 12700K, 5700X is limit, but like 5600, absolutely, this will work. And if you are looking for the best cooler at a given size, the question is, do you have 65 millimeters of space? Yes, then the X65 is your man. If not, step down a couple of millimeters at uh, 58 millimeters, we have the second space, which is the Shuriken 2, and then you can continue to go down that road. But okay, this should be it for the steroid-induced Noxia NH-L9X65. At this point, a huge thank you to Noxia for providing it to us. And if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Noxia NH-L9i. You know, if you can't control an addict, just get the normal kit. On a side note, we now also have channel memberships, so if you're looking a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, well, that's a pretty good way to go. And additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but I will also use it to get anabolic steroids to create my very own Noctua NH-L9X100. Exciting. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.